welcome to our weekly garden check-in. My name is Kelsey, children's educator here at Lewis Ginter Botanical Garden, and this week we're checking in from the conservatory where we house our tropical plants. The tropics is a region surrounding the equator where it's hot all year long, not like in Richmond where we have cold seasons, which prevents us from growing these tropical plants outside. The conservatory is climate controlled and on the west side of the conservatory we house our desert plants and it's a desert like environment where we find plants like cactuses and succulents. The desert gets less than 10 inches of rain a year. On the east side of the conservatory we house our rainforest plants. Rainforests are characterized by lots of rain, so rainforests get at least 80 inches of rain per year. And we find plants like orchids and air plants. And so let's go take a look at some of the adaptations that these different plants in different environments develop over many, many generations to be able to survive in very different environments. Desert plants have many unique adaptations that allow them to live in an environment with very little water. The leaves are often covered with a waxy cuticle that prevents water from escaping the leaf into the atmosphere. That cuticle also protects the leaf from very hot temperatures during the day and cold temperatures at nighttime. The leaves and the stems also store water very well. Some cactuses have developed spines on the outside of the leaf and stems to prevent animals from drinking the juices of the plant and tapping into their water stores. Let's go check out one of my favorite desert plants called aloe. Aloe is believed to originate in the Arabian Peninsula and people have been using aloe for medicinal purposes for thousands of years. We're going to dissect our aloe plant and see what's inside the leaf and look at some of those adaptations. So as you can see our aloe leaf has the nice thick waxy cuticle on the outside of the leaf and on the inside look at all of that water storage. This gel is what we use for sunburn. You can put this on your skin when you have a sunburn and it's cooling and very moisturizing and healing for the skin. In the rainforest and in the east wing of the conservatory, it's much shadier than in the desert. Plants like banana trees have flat and large leaves that are competing with each other to get to the sunlight. Other plants like epiphytes, epiphytes include certain species of orchids, air plants, and Spanish moss, are clinging to the trees and climbing up towards the sunlight. Epiphytes have a special adaptation that they use other plants for their structure and are able to climb up those trees and get all the nutrients and water that they need from the air around them. If you enjoyed this week's check-in, make sure to stay tuned for two new virtual field trips that will be added to the website here shortly. Amazing Adaptations will compare desert and rainforest plant adaptations and Tropical Treasures will show food plants that we get from uh, tropical places. So be sure to stay tuned. All of our virtual field trips are free of charge and you can register on the website. Thanks so much for checking in. I hope you guys have a great week.